to my youtube channel Piketty stitch life is so creative this is a vlog all about my crafting that involves fibers and threads so today is wednesday the 25th of august 2021 now for those of you who've never watched my vlogs before i tend to divide them up into sections pertaining to different crafts and put timestamps down below in the description box so if there's a particular craft that you're interested in then please click on that craft in the timestamp and it should take you to that section straight away otherwise please just sit back grab a brew and enjoy the vlog just want to show you quickly i have shown this before but i do think it's gorgeous it's a william morris design it's a little crochet bag from liberty of london and inside I've got all my little squares plus on this side are all my crochet hooks this is the Floralia blanket and it's designed by Pippin Poppycock I'll put a link in down below to her website actually to the actual Floralia blanket um, pattern which is a free pattern so this is um, written in US and UK terminology for crochet I use the US because that's easier for me to understand and there are four different colorways of this blanket so they use style craft um, double knitting I've got it the wrong way so they use style craft double knitting okay so basically they she she picked all these um they they give you all the colors to use and how many um balls you'll need of the yarn and uh yeah there's some colorways that don't need as many different colors if you know what i mean but um i'll pop a pick in of the different colors for you I'll bring it a little bit closer and show you so this is the flower and inside this flower I think there's like this is called the popcorn stitch so this is like a cream shade I think this one is tomato this shade is vintage peach and this one is peach I can't remember what the green was or the blue I think it's seaway but um, I'll put the links in to the four different colourways what she suggests and you can see for yourself the colours I have used so yeah you start off in the rounds and then it squares out now I am doing the next section which will end up squares what you sew in a row and add to this blanket all around the sides now it looks really complicated i mean hats off i don't know how they design all this it's absolutely beautiful but um there is some youtube tutorials by helen shrimpton from crystals and crochet so i'll pop in the link to that youtube channel um the first part and uh, where she shows you how to start off because you start off in the center and yeah it's, she's so good and she does that in the u.s terminology she does use but i mean it doesn't matter 
what whether you use UK or the US because you can see what she's doing so so yeah so you've not only got some fantastic instruction and color photographs all free but you can actually go onto the YouTube channels and see how this is made so I am on this section and I've just completed my rounds so I'll bring those up a little bit closer and then we start squaring these off so as you can see I've done the first round it's in the oops I've got my needle in there they shouldn't have it in should I? Um, it's in the pale peach and we've got three popcorns in each corner so I've made three of these and then I've got 17 left to do and then I think there's another couple of rounds and then we join the squares together and sew them to the blankets so I've been getting on with that and enjoying crocheting that so for those of you who are new to my vlog I should have shown you this in the beginning um, this is my project tracker for August you see so I have 10 projects usually in my rotation and I like to have knitting project a crochet some cross stitch or something I'm just making random in you know in a rotation of 10 so basically on a Monday I might do some knitting on a Tuesday I might cross stitch on a Wednesday I'll work on my crochet project and I do that for two reasons one because I think it's great to have different projects on the go and it also gives me more content to show you but also it helps me with my joints because as I've got older um, I am beginning to ache a little bit so the other night I made a quilt I finished off a quilt and I spent a lot more time on it than I usually do say two nights and um, yeah my shoulders and my arms hurt now so yeah it does help me um, because you're using different sets of muscles and uh, yeah that's why I've decided to um, do different crafts on different days now I am currently knitting and I made this project bag big so basically for to uh, hold a jumper and I'm knitting the Francis cardigan by Marie Wally now I'm knitting this in this beautiful King Cole it's lovely and soft the wool used in the book is suggested Shetland wool which I find rather prickly against my skin so I thought what I would do is try the King Cole because this is 50% wool and 50% nylon and it's called panache and this is the colourway oatmeal so that's there showing up now let me bring this a little bit closer and show you the ply it's a lovely wool don't get me wrong but I have I have knit a swatch in this and I think let me have a look you can see it better if I show you the swatch and it's quite it has like little flecks it's beautiful colour um, but knitting the rib yeah you can see this is this unplies very quickly and it can be quite splitty to knit the ribbon that's what I'm finding now I didn't realize that this cardigan was knit in the round and usually what I tend to do is knit on dpn's at first well i hadn't got long enough dpn's the other problem is is that what i tend to do if i've only got circulars to do this on 
I will knit the first few rows back and two, okay, as if I'm knitting on two needles you know, ordinary knitting needles. And then what I will do is join in the round because if you cast on, because there's over 300 stitches, there is a more high risk of you putting a twist in so that when, you know, and you don't always realize until you've done a few rows. So I've knit to and fro and then I've joined and I think I've got a twist. So if I show you, see, so I'm thinking, right, I, I've got a stick at the front. I could cut it now and because I think the stitches would hold and I could untwist and, and see if I can rectify it that way. But actually I am, I'm going to knit this on for double pointed needles so I'm going to have to send off for the size 2.75 millimeters because I haven't got that size so yeah that's gonna have to go on hold until my needles arrive never mind so the next thing I've got is cross stitch to show you and I've got a finish so this is Spring Rolls, and this is by a pattern by Plum Street Samplers. This is on a 28 even weave, and the cottons I've pulled from my stash, the flosses. So I'll bring that up a little bit closer for you to have a look at that. I've made it into a cushion, or a little pillow, and I've got this actually on my uh, mantle. It looks really nice. So what I did, instead of, I did, I've put a buttonhole in because what I've done, this here, the even weave, you could see through it. So I thought what I would do is sew the, I've sewn this to here and then inside there's a white, pillow so if I want I can take the stuffed pillow out and wash this if it gets a little bit grubby so that's why I've done it that way so there we go and this was just some fabric I had in my stash just a little scrap so see it it's worthy to save your scraps you never know when you're going to use them up. The only thing I would say is that I gauged the buttonhole rock and it's not very central, but um, never mind. And that's just a spare button from my button box. But there we go, spring rolls. And I think it's really pretty. I'm really pleased with that. I've got um, a full coverage um, cross stitch by Heaven and Earth. But I've only done a hundred stitches and the squares are so small that you wouldn't really notice much difference. So I'm not showing that or my Kringles. Um, that is uh, another quite a biggish piece by Little House Needleworks. So I'm just finishing off the roof on that. So those are two other cross stitch projects I've got on the go at the moment. This is my Christmas one I started uh, as part of the Christmas in July. It was um, a charity shop find, uh, which is always good. Um, I think some people call them thrift shops. But um, yeah, that's grown quite a bit from last time I vlogged. So... This is quite a big piece now up here. This will be the bow, you see. So there's quite a lot of um, stitches in that. But once that bow has been completed, I've just got to work around to here. And then after that, I need to put in the the ferns. I just need to put the ferns in afterwards, these little branches. 
so I don't know <laughs> that'll so yeah I'm, I'm feeling rather pleased with this and I'm so glad that the the word fitted in <laughs> I thought if I've done the count wrong I'm going to be in trouble I think this is a 14 count so yeah it's lovely to stitch on the 14 count because you know you can see the hole so clearly and uh, it's a pleasure so yeah i really like that whilst participating in christmas in july and another christmas project i started was a christmas quilt called peace on earth now this is meant to be a wall hanging but believe you me, it would cover up quite a bit of one of my walls. So it'll just be folded up and used on our sofa or settee, whatever you want to call it. In England, we call them settees. So, um, yeah, this is by Coach House Designs. And I purchased the fabric for this from a quilt shop in Fort Myers when I was on holiday in Florida um, quilt lovers hangout um, it was this grey and so I ran out so because what I've done is I should have used that in there and I was using the star fabric bring a little bit closer up for the outer squares and I got totally mixed up and swapped them round accidentally so that meant I ended up with too much of this but not enough of that so I had to re when I returned I bought some more not realizing that it is slightly lighter but never mind, um, the quilt's done now. So. so here we go. I'll show you properly um, when I film a montage of the crafts, the projects at the end of this vlog. So it's peace on, oh, it's peace on earth. And this is the car. Gosh, you need some Weetabix to hold this up. <laughs> right, there we go. So that's the car with the tree on. So I think on the actual on the actual pattern, it's got a very thin border around it. So I did that in the red but then it didn't look right so I used this beautiful green fabric now this is um, I think it was called Pine Forest by Patrick Luce uh, and the fabric went with that Christmas bag I made and I wanted to make another one with this as the lining but I've used it as the border because you know I just needed that contrast and then I've used a flange binding so I'll bring that a little bit closer for you to see now with a flange binding you sew the binding onto the back of the quilt first and then you turn it over and you stitch in the ditch on the piping so there's no hand sewing although I'm not um, I don't mind sewing hand sewing the binding I quite enjoy that but to be honest I've had enough and I wanted that contrast so what you do to sew when you sew the piping the top stitch was in red now I have sewn the back red as well because I've used red cotton to sew all this together. I have quilted this by going just quilting across the, the blocks in the ditch. I've used the grey in the top 
and a red in the bottom of the bobbing and then what I did is I used red in the top and the bobbing for stitching in the ditch on the piping. You can't see I used a pattern on my machine to quilt the red border. You can't see that so I'll show you the back and you can perhaps just make out the pattern in there. So I didn't have enough fabric for the back of the quilt so what I did is I've just cut it into strips and paired it with this red fabric so it's not brilliantly quilted because you shouldn't see any drag lines should you really it should all be perfectly straight so no quilt please allowed but um, yeah I don't think it's worked out too bad so that is a finished quilt now i am currently working on a little beatrix potter inspired quilt for my two younger granddaughters and in my last vlog i showed you um one of the blocks um which was i'd cross stitched a mrs tiggy wink winkle is it a wiggle no winkle mrs tiggy winkle onto some linen now Beatrix Potter, although she was, I think she was born in London, she did come to live in Cumbria in the north of England and she had a love for the countryside. So I thought it'd be a really good idea to embroider some trees on some linen to showcase, you know, her love of the countryside and her garden. So I decided I would embroider a cherry blossom tree mm. linen from um, the charity shop. Now one half I've used for the Mrs Tiggywinkle block and this is the second half. However, I'm not too happy with the tree. I haven't finished it yet so I'll bring it a little bit closer. I've used um, some DMC variated floss for the trunk. So basically those brown stripes are all incorporated into the yarn, uh, into the floss. And then I've used some pink variated for the blossoms and some pinks from my stand. And then I'm just going to do some more French knots there and there. Now one of the reasons I'm not going to be using this in the quilt is because I think the tree is too big. I'd, I'd like it to be a little bit smaller. I got the idea for this from um, Nikki Franklin, whose online business is called The Stitchery. Now she actually has also published some Beatrix Potter inspired embroidery um, on linen, you get kits and I think there's linen and the flosses and the instructions included and they're absolutely beautiful. So I'll put a link into her website and I believe she has an Etsy shop too. But this is too big. I got the instruction from this from an embroidery magazine. Again, it was Nikki Franklin, um, but I made my tree too big. I was going to paint some grass down here with my fabric paint. So I think I'll do another one, maybe a little bit smaller. The other thing to consider is if this is going to be a quilt, it's going to be a story time quilt. So not one for on the bed, but when we're reading stories to the girls, they can have the quilt on and we can point to a block and then um, pick a story for that block. So, um, yeah, I think this is wouldn't stand up to the washing. So what would be required to keep a quilt clean? So my eldest daughter has seen this and so she's asked if she could have it. So I'm going to put it in a picture hoop, which I've got, and I'll put her back on and pretty it up a bit and she can have this to hang on a wall but um, I do I do love it 
so and you know this linen i don't know it's about a couple of pound so that's done me two blocks and like i say you know you've lost another two pound that's it and the rest is from a stash but this is all done in a split stitch and like i say these are french knots and it takes quite a while to do this amount of French knots but the good thing is it does um, does get your experience up there is just one more project I need to show you and that's this one I've been working again on this this is my tapestry it was a kit I picked up in a sale from Hobbycraft it is using the anchor threads so it's a, an anchor kit I got this reduced quite a lot I think it was from 44 pound to 17 50, 17 pound 50 I got this um, there was quite a big reduction on this kit when I bought this and I think this was about three years ago I bought this um, but I've picked it up and put it down and but anyhow um, yeah it's in my project rotation now, so I am cracking on with that. But I have run out of a wool. I think it's this one. And I shouldn't have done because it's a kit. So, yeah. I'm now going to have to order some off um, online. From Lovecrafts or somewhere. So, but of course you know what that means, don't you? means to get the free postage I'll have to spend so much money so what can I buy hmm anyhow there we go that's 10 projects obviously I finished a couple so I'll be looking at a couple to go into the rotation but we'll discuss that the next vlog okay <music>give you a bit of a life update so for the last two weeks um i live in the northwest of england so for the last two weeks it's been raining and now we've got warmer weather again um i think oh yeah last friday i went to help my daughter to make some um costumes um because she goes to the just so festival every year um, obviously it was cancelled last year but um, this year it was on it's only around the corner from me actually the just so is and that's on for three days well you usually dress up as an animal so one year I did them all owl costumes the following year I did them fox costumes and then this year she decided to go as lions and um, she d decided to have a go herself but then I had the proverbial can you help me on the Thursday so on the Friday I went over there and she got um, a sewing machine which she'd had given her so we got that out of the box got that going it's quite a good sewing machine actually uh, a Toyota one so uh, I had my trusty Alna she had a Toyota and we sewed um, the costumes together she'd made a head start so that was useful but again it was quite late finishing i think i ended up getting in at quarter past 11 at night so we'd spent quite a few hours sewing and she did say to me you know mum it's so much easier just to come to your house and clap them <laughs> i think she thought it only took me a couple of days to make um costumes but it's um <laughs> it can take over a week so anyhow, uh, yeah, we had some fun making those.
so that's me all done um if you've enjoyed this vlog please give me a like and leave me a comment and hopefully i'll see you in another couple of weeks until then bye mm -hmm.